I'm here with Ben Collins, who is a kernel developer on Ubuntu. How are you doing, Ben? I'm doing good, thank you. Okay, so how are you enjoying UDS? Uh, busy. It's yeah? a lot busier than some of the past ones for us. Okay, so what sort of things are you looking at on the kernel for this one? Um, well, we're doing some things with, uh, with boot speed. Um, we've uh, concentrated a lot on, on how long it's taking us to get to user space. Um, a lot of the issues that we've touched on are, revolve around modules. Um, because when things are not in the kernel, it, it takes longer for them to, to load up than as if they were built in. Uh, at the, some of the decisions we came to on that is we're going to be uh, taking some of the subsystems that are almost always going to be loaded anyway and loading them, putting them directly into the kernel. So that there's no module loading, there's no overhead that, as far as that's concerned. Why would they be modules in the first place? Um, so NITRAMFS started the whole modularity thing. Uh, it allowed us to have a smaller kernel so that we didn't have to have all of these bits and pieces in there that some people weren't using mm. and it kind of got out of hand. Everything was modular, especially when we were talking about things between like IDE uh, and ATA subsystem. We had to have a modular because they didn't want to live in the kernel together. Mm. Uh, but um, on reflection, we decided that it's probably better to have some of the subsystems in there. Yeah, okay. So. There's a big thing from Intel, wasn't there, about getting a five-second boot on uh, the EPCs. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to see that for John T. Are we for Ubuntu? Yeah, no, so that was a, sort of a special case. I mean, the, that boot was fine-tuned specifically for that machine as a distribution. We still have to account for all the machines out there. So um, some may fare better than others, and but we're trying to get as, as good of a cross-section as possible um, without degradating performance on certain equipment. And a lot of that is not just the kernel, it is user space utilities on top of it as well. Yeah, yeah, so um, um, a lot of the user space has to deal with, um, you know, how long it takes to load, go through files, pre-caching and things like that. Mm. We did discuss some things about pre-caching so that we can hot load files that are known to be read on boot. Um, it gets pretty difficult because we can pre-cache, but if we overflow the person's cache, then they're flushing things out they're going to need, so we're, we're, we're harming performance more than anything mm -hmm. in that case, so there's a lot of heuristics involved, uh, and I know there's some tools, several tools that they're looking at using to, to identify the best ways to handle some of those things. Are there specific targets in terms of getting a boot speed time, or, or is it just to make it faster? I know there's an overall target. I don't think we have one specifically for the kernel. Uh, we, we honestly don't know how much we'll be able to say. We know some very simple things we can do to save time how much it's going to save and how much it's going to subtract from the total boot time, we're not sure yet. Okay, so you're looking at power management things as well, is that right? Yeah, um, so a lot of the netbooks, things like that, there's, there, it's a huge growth and, and battery life is unfortunately showing up as not a great thing, especially right. when you, you hear people talk a lot about, well, you know, this same machine, if I boot it on Mac OS X, I get four hours. If I boot it on your Linux, it gets two hours of battery life. Right. Uh, so we're trying to identify different areas where we can improve battery life. Um, it falls into several categories. Uh, idle time, disabling uh, some devices aren't being used, like Ethernet ports aren't always being used on laptops the majority of the time. But they're still drawing power. Um, there's USB ports that are constantly drawing power. Uh, they can be idled. Um, mm. Sound... Uh, sound chips that can be idled. The HDA sound driver allows you to set an idle time so that it won't draw power, especially if there's no sound being played, which is mostly the majority of the time for me. And there's increasing, increasingly support in hardware for power management and things as well. Right, New exactly. processors can burst and power down and things. Can't yeah, they? yeah. So a lot of those things they're they're enabled in the kernel so that you can take advantage of those the, the lower power draw. Uh, but they're, they're not being actively used. Right. Um, so we're trying to identify the different drivers that support these lower power states and, and implement things that will take advantage of them. And is that a case of there being a lot of work going into the upstream kernel mm -hmm. first before it can come down to Ubuntu? Right, right. So Okay. Uh, what sort of other things are you looking at in particular? Uh, for power savings? Uh, but just, just this week. Uh, well, we, um, we just got done with a session for Suspend Resume. Okay. Um, Always a big topic for uh, laptop users. Yeah, yeah. So there, it's suspend resume has always been kind of flaky. We have some new tools now that will allow us to uh, go through hundreds of cycles of suspend resume and try to identify what is causing problems if, if there's any problems at all. Um, nailing it down to drivers that are you know having issues. Uh, the big thing with suspend resume is not only that it's becoming more important, but because of multi-threading. Um, and CPUs and multi-core you know, multi CPUs, the 
the race conditions are more evident with the newer hardware. So right. we're, we're trying to uh, put a lot of time and effort into testing for that. Is it always chasing a moving target on suspend and resume? Maybe? Yeah, uh, the problem with suspend and resume is it's very dependent on the BIOS. Um, so a lot of our issues that we see are it's, it's things we, we might be able to work around, but most likely it's not a bug in Linux in itself. Mm. Um, BIOS issues, especially graphics cards, VGA BIOS, and things like that will cause suspend and resume problems that we have no control over. Um, and yeah. we're hoping to get more testing up to the OEMs so that they can identify these problems before the hardware actually gets out the door. Is, is there a lot that can be done to make sure that the BIOS you know, doesn't cause these problems in the first place? Yeah, it's all a matter of testing. Um, yeah. There's other things, uh, you know, the OEMs that we work with directly, we're, we're pushing them hard to try to use different tools to identify problems mm -hmm. problems in the BIOS. There's, the, you know, Linux firmware kit that'll, uh, it's from Intel, and it takes a dump of their BIOS and, and will spit out any problems that are that are with it, whether it's, um, especially where there are going to be incompatibilities with Linux and things. And having OEMs shipping Ubuntu presumably means they're motivated to have that sort of thing work. Yeah, yeah. And, and as we get closer with some of these, the, the design teams and the engineering teams, um, you know, initially we found that, that the, the Linux side was totally detached from the, the hardware design. They got the product when it needed to be tested, mm. as opposed to being fully involved in the bring up of the system in the first place. And so they're, they're getting more down into where they're part of the, the product design. That way they can have more control over how it's going to integrate with Linux after it's, after it's done. Cool. So what do you think is the main thing you're going to take away from this week? Uh, motivation for the next six months. <laughs> so I, I think, um, at least for the kernel team, we've got a lot of stuff on our plate and we're, I'm hoping that it means we'll be more focused through this six months. Excellent. Okay, well, thanks for talking to me today. Right, thank you.